The automobile industry, once a symbol of modern progress, luxury, and mobility, has found itself at a crossroads in recent years. Global economic downturns, paradigm shifts in consumer behavior, emerging tech competitors, and environmental concerns have demanded an evolution of strategies for survival. Amid this evolving landscape, a startling announcement from one of the giants of the industry turned countless heads. Oliver Bloom, the CEO of Volkswagen, VW, confirmed that the company would be shifting its gears dramatically by selling its vehicles directly to consumers. This strategy, primarily aimed at offering vehicles at lower prices, is a bid to avoid what many would consider unthinkable, the bankruptcy of Volkswagen. When one visualizes Volkswagen, the image that often comes to mind is the iconic Beetle, a symbol of reliability, accessibility, and democratic design. As one of the world's largest automakers, Volkswagen's portfolio is vast, encompassing a range of vehicles from luxury brands like Porsche and Audi to its own line of sedans, SUVs, and the recently reimagined electric ID series. Yet, like all legends, VW has faced its share of challenges. The most pressing, which necessitated this shift in business strategy, was the looming threat of bankruptcy. Oliver Bloom's decision reflects the broader trends in consumer demands. Traditional dealership models often add a markup to the vehicle's cost, attributed to dealership overheads, commission, and various other fees. This pricing structure, in many cases, made new vehicles inaccessible to a vast segment of potential customers, especially during tough economic times. The direct-to-consumer model promises transparency, efficiency, and most importantly, affordability. Yet Volkswagen is not the first to flirt with the DTC model. Tesla, the Californian electric vehicle giant, has been a flag bearer for this approach. Their sales model bypasses traditional dealerships entirely, opting for company-owned showrooms and online sales. This approach has not only allowed Tesla to maintain better control over their branding and customer experience, but also to pass on savings to the consumer. Seeing Tesla's success and market capitalization surpass traditional automakers, it was only a matter of time before others would consider similar strategies. Furthermore, the context in which Bloom's announcement came is essential to understand. The automobile sector has been undergoing a transformative phase, with electrification, automation, and shared mobility at its helm. While VW launched its ID series to tap into the electric vehicle market, competitors like Ford, with their Mustang Mach-E, and General Motors with their commitment to an all-electric future, have upped the ante. VW's DTC strategy can be seen as a move not just to counter financial challenges, but also to establish a strong foothold in the burgeoning EV market. However, the pivot to DTC doesn't come without its challenges. Dealerships for decades have been the primary touch points for customers. They offer test drives, immediate deliveries, post-sale services, and act as intermediaries between the manufacturer and the consumer. By selling directly to the consumer, Volkswagen would need to reinvent these touch points. This could involve a significant overhaul of their supply chain, logistics, and customer service infrastructure. Another factor to consider is the global nature of Volkswagen's operations. DTC may be a fitting strategy for markets like North America or Europe, where digital literacy and online purchasing behavior are entrenched. However, in many parts of Asia, Africa, and South America, the dealership culture is more than just a sales point, it's a trust point. Here, personal interactions, negotiations, and the tactile experience of a vehicle before purchase play a pivotal role in decision making. Competitors will be watching Volkswagen's move closely. Brands like Toyota, Honda, and Hyundai, which have a vast global presence, might take cues from VW's strategies, analyzing its successes and failures before making their move. They too are aware that the winds of change are blowing through the auto industry. Whether it's the rise of EVs, the promise of autonomous vehicles, or innovative sales strategies like DTC, Adaptation is the name of the game. As Volkswagen steers its massive ship in a new direction, one can't help but reflect on its rich history. From the beetle that democratized mobility in the 20th century to its ambitious electric dreams in the 21st, VW has always shown a knack for capturing the zeitgeist. Oliver Bloom's announcement is not just about bypassing dealerships or avoiding bankruptcy, it's a clarion call for innovation and reinvention. 
as this new era unfolds, the broader implications of such decisions on the automotive industry's employment landscape cannot be ignored. Thousands of jobs from salespeople to mechanics have traditionally been rooted in the dealership model. While the direct-to-consumer approach may streamline processes and cut costs, the human element of the trade, steeped in decades of tradition, is at risk. Dealerships have often been more than mere sales outlets. They've served as community hubs, places where families return generation after generation, either to buy their first car or get trustworthy service for their beloved vehicles. Such shifts also force us to ponder the future of automotive advertising and marketing. Traditional campaigns have been built around seasonal sales events at dealerships, new launches coinciding with festive periods, and the thrill of the test drive weekend experience. With a DTC model, the marketing narrative will inevitably shift to digital platforms, focusing on online experiences, virtual test drives, and interactive vehicle customization tools. Brands will need to invest more in digital storytelling, leveraging augmented and virtual reality to simulate the tactile feel of a car. But it's not just about sales and marketing. Post-sales services, traditionally a dealership stronghold, will need a fresh approach. Perhaps we'll see a rise in mobile service units which come to your doorstep to service or repair your vehicle, or maybe centralized service hubs equipped with the latest technology and staffed by the manufacturer's experts will become the norm. The aim will be to ensure that while the purchase process moves online, the human touch isn't entirely lost in the journey of vehicle ownership. It's also crucial to recognize that while Volkswagen's move is pioneering among legacy car makers, the industry's future will likely be a mosaic of various sales models tailored to regional preferences, technological infrastructure, and cultural nuances. The one-size-fits-all approach will give way to flexibility, adaptability, and localization. The lessons learned from other industries can offer valuable insights. For instance, the retail sector, which has witnessed a similar upheaval with the rise of e-commerce giants like Amazon, still sees value in brick-and-mortar stores. Many e-retailers are opening physical outlets to offer tactile experiences to consumers. So, even as Volkswagen and potentially other automakers lean into the DTC model, there might always be a place for physical showrooms, albeit reimagined and repurposed. This unprecedented maneuver by Volkswagen and the ripples it sends throughout the automotive sector speaks volumes about the broader economic and technological forces shaping the 21st century. Consumer behaviors are no longer solely influenced by tangible product qualities or traditional marketing efforts. Instead, they are increasingly driven by convenience, digital integration, and an expectation for seamless, direct interactions with brands. This transformation isn't exclusive to the automotive sector. It's a reflection of a world undergoing a digital metamorphosis. In embracing a DTC model, Volkswagen is acknowledging a broader societal shift towards digital-first consumer experiences. This shift isn't just about sales channels. It's about reimagining the very essence of how brands engage with their audiences. With the proliferation of smart devices, the Internet of Things, and augmented reality tools, the modern consumer lives in a blended world of physical and digital realities. It's only logical that their purchasing experiences mirror this integration. This move also opens a conversation about data and privacy. A DTC model heavily reliant on online transactions will provide Volkswagen with a treasure trove of consumer data. From browsing patterns and customization preferences to financial details, the data's depth and breadth will be expansive. While this can lead to hyper-personalized marketing and product development strategies, it also raises ethical concerns about data usage, storage, and sharing. In an age where data breaches and privacy concerns are increasingly common, Volkswagen's responsibility to safeguard user information will be paramount. In the grand tapestry of automotive history, Oliver Bloom's announcement will be remembered as a moment of reckoning, a crossroads where tradition met innovation. As consumers, industry insiders, and automobile aficionados, we are all passengers on this journey, eagerly anticipating the road that lies ahead. In this evolving narrative, Volkswagen has turned a page, and the next chapters promise to be nothing short of riveting. Thank you for sticking with me all the way to the end. Please like, comment, and subscribe and make sure the notification bell is turned on so you don't miss a video.